بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد uh, Some of us have created a culture <coughs> that when we hear a narration of the Prophet وسلم, and if it's not familiar to our ears or there's something in it that we disagree with you will hear many times people say this hadith is da'if, this hadith is da'if, this hadith is da'if I must tell you that people that say that face a very big problem of knowledge and understanding and the proper respect. Of course, Nabi Muhammad said, whoever said something attributed to me, the narrator, that is not of me, his place will be in the hellfire. At the same time, the Qur'an tells us to obey Allah and His Messenger. The Qur'an tells us, don't raise your voice above the voice of the Prophet And the meaning of that in today's world is that if somebody says a narration of the Prophet and you dislike it for whatever reason, you even disagree with it, but to raise your voice above a narration of the Prophet Allah says, if you raise your voice above the voice of the Prophet, your all your good deeds will be lost and you won't even be aware. Because it shows the, you can say, lack of knowledge and arrogance of the one that would, without any thought, any research, just simply say the hadith is da'if. Let me share with you what it means. Let me share with you what it means when a hadith is da'if. And do you know the difference between the meaning of da'if, uh, meaning of the word da'if in the muhaddisin wa in the fuqaha? What is the difference when a muhaddith says a hadith is da'if? And a waf- when a faqih says, a hadith is da'if. Do you know the difference? Why would you say something is da'if when you don't even know if you're talking from the perspective of the muhaddith? Or are you talking from the perspective of the faqih? When the faqih says generally the hadith is da'if, He's talking about the matan, the text of the narration, the meaning and the application of the text is da'if. When a muhaddis says this hadith is da'if, he's not talking necessarily or usually, he's not talking about the matan of the hadith, no. He's talking about the asnad of the hadith, the chain of narrators. So when you say to somebody, this hadith is da'if, what are you talking about? Are you saying this as a muhaddith? Or are you saying this as a faqih? Problem number one. Problem number two. Let's say there's a hadith. I'll give you an example of a very beautiful chain of narration that's by some people considered, you know, amongst the the golden chains of hadith narrations. Okay, let me give you one example of that. So there is a chain of narrations of Dhuhri, who is a very famous narrator. But Dhuhri has many listeners, many students, many many students. Amongst the students of Zuhri, or sorry, amongst the teachers of Zuhri, so Zuhri heard from Ali ibn Hussein radiallahu anhu. So Ali ibn Hussein heard from Hussein. Hussein heard from Ali. This is a beautiful chain. Now, this chain goes down from Zuhri. Zuhri had his students. So Zuhri, he learned from Ali ibn Hussein. Ali ibn Hussein learned from Hussein. Hussein learned from Ali ibn Talib. When you say hadith is da'if, so someone after Dhuhri 
two people down or three people down is weak. But the person who heard it for the first time, like Dhuhri from Ali ibn Hussein, or somebody who heard this from Hussein, or somebody who heard this narration from Ali ibn Talib, somebody else before, because Bukhari came about 290 years after the Prophet Hussein and Ali are way before. There were fuqaha in the very beginning of Islam, like Imam Abu Hanifa, for example. One of the golden, uh, not golden, but you could say silver chains, or some actually considered a golden chain, is the one that goes to Ibrahim Nakhli. It's considered the best chain of Iraq. So when this chain, these people that were listening in that first generation, right? If somebody from the first generation confirmed, confirmed, I'll give you maybe a better example. One of the opinions is that the best narrator of Imam Malik's opinion is Imam Shafi himself. Okay. Imam Malik learned from a Nafi, Nafi from this son of Umar, uh, Abdullah bin Umar, and then Umar bin Khattab. Now, Imam Malik has many students, some of them weaker, some of them stronger. Imam Shafi is one of them. There are others too. But the chain goes down. The chain continues. But if Imam Malik was in Medina, and he says, he has a certain opinion looking at the people of Medina. He says, yes, he accepted that narration up to, up to the time he was in. He, his chain of narration is only three people, right? Imam Bukhari will come down, it'll be six or seven people, right? Or somebody else will come, it'll be six and seven people. By the time it's six and seven people, there may be somebody in here who is weak. And so the hadith is weak. But before it, before that, at the time of Imam Malik, 150 years before, he heard this hadith, Imam Malik, or Abu Hanifa heard this narration, and he said, no, I accept this, because there was no weak link up to him, up to his time. There was no weak link. So my second question is, the hadith that you call da'if, is there any great imams? Sufyan al-Thawri, Imam Layth, Imam Malik, Imam Abu Hanifa, so on and so forth. Is there any imam of that generation up to the point the hadith before somebody is in that hadith da'if up to that time, before that time, was there any great imam who accepted the validity of that hadith? Like Imam Nisreen, for example. He also has, Imam Nisreen, has a great chain, like a golden chain. So, if the early narrators and the early listeners, the early imams accepted a narration, later on it became da'if, because six people down, seven people down, it became da'if. But before that, it was authentic. When you're saying a hadith is da'if, do you know of which generation amongst the seven generations of the narration, which generation, which person, which of which generation is he da'if? And were there any major imams who accepted that narration? So first, you make no distinction between da'if as understood by the fuqaha and da'if as understood by the muhaddisin. First, you don't do that. You just look at a book that says it's da'if and you're done. This is the Google alim, you know. <coughs> Second, you do not identify that the hadith that is da'if, before there was somebody in that chain that was weak, did somebody accept that hadith to be authentic amongst the great imams of the ummah? Tell me, did you do this? Do you have the knowledge of this? That do you know that a, ch a chain of if if there's a chain of six people, and the first three are authentic, are there are many imams of that time who accepted that? Can, do you know examples of hadith like that? If you don't know what you are talking about when you say the word da'if, then don't say the word da'if. 
Don't say the word da'if if you don't know who in that narration is weak. Don't say the word da'if if you don't know even if the hadith has weaknesses. Where where is there is the asnad authentic to 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 the point that there was some imam of that generation? Let's say the first three people or the four people in the chain. Any imams in the first two generations or the first two centuries who said, no, this is authentic. When it came to me, it was authentic. I don't know what happened after, as, as, the, as the student chain went down. Ibn Abbas, for example, has authentic students and some students are not so authentic. Ibn Mas'ud has students, some that are more authentic than the others. As the chain goes down, the probability of, of weakness in the hadith increases. Everybody understands that. The early generation that was listening to the person that was only three steps away, like Imam Malik, from Malik to Nafir, to Ibn Umar, to the Prophet wasallam, Can't be simpler than that. So when you say da'if, what are you saying? So that's problem number two. Problem number three, let me share with you this because I wanted to share this to, with you. When you're saying a hadith is da'if, now let's look at this narration. This narration is by Abdullah bin Abbas. Okay? Sayyid bin Jubair reported Ibn Abbas saw the Messenger of Allah وسلم, perform evolution. He narrated the tradition which says the Prophet وسلم, performed detail of evolution three times. He wiped his head and his ears once. The hadith is not only da'if, it is da'if jiddan, extremely weak. Meaning, throw this out the window. Okay? Extremely weak hadith. Somebody will look at this and say, oh, this hadith is weak. And Shaykh Albani calls it weak. Now, let me share with you another narration. Abdullah bin Amr radiyallahu an. Okay, this is uh, the son of Amr bin As radiyallahu an. He narrates a hadith that's known to be authentic. The chain is authentic. When Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa wiped his head, he inserted his index finger in his ears and wiped the exterior of his ears with his thumbs. Narrated by Imam Daud and Nisai and others, it's authentic. Wait, this narration that's naif says the Prophet wiped his head and ears once. And over here it says the Prophet inserted his index finger in his ears and wiped the exterior with the thumbs. Once, according to the narration. Because in Arabic you would know if it was more than once, so it says once. So this narration is authentic, and this exact same narration is not authentic. It is according to Albani, Da'if, Jaddan, extremely, extremely weak. Now let me ask you this. When you say a hadith is Da'if, do you know if there is another version of a similar narration or a similar context that is not da'if and is maybe hasan or sahih? Do you know? Have you done the research? Have you looked at the issue of are there are is there surrounding evidence around that hadith that show that that has supporting evidence from other narrations that are authentic. So now this hadith that is da'if jiddan is saying the same thing a sahih hadith is saying. And like this, let me share with you one more example. This hadith is not sahih, it is hasan. I saw the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa performing a balloon. He wiped his head front and back, his temples and his ears once. So he wiped his head and his ears once. The hadith is Hassan, not authentic. So when you say 
that the hadith is da'if. You must be then saying that all the surrounding hadith on this topic are also da'if. Have you done that research? Or did you just fragment yourself? Fragment. Fragmenting meaning you picked up a book, you looked at one hadith, you saw it was da'if, and you said, oh brother, that hadith is da'if. Oh brother, that hadith is da'if. No thought to the fact that maybe there are imams of the earlier times who didn't consider it Da'if, they considered it authentic. No thought to that. This is the level of scholarship that we've fallen into. We've just become copycats. Many people have become copycats of Albani or whoever, others that sometimes are Salafi brothers they follow. And because of this lack of scholarship, what happens? The people that criticize the Muslims in hadith literature, they get something to say because there's no real scholarship. When you say the word da'if, you better be careful. Because if you're saying da'if, that the Prophet did not say this, and there's other collaborating evidence that he did say this, or he did do this, وسلم, then if you didn't get that basic level of knowledge and you're putting yourself in the position of knowledge to declare something to be da'if, that there are other ahadiths, other narrations authenticating that narration, the da'if hadith is then supporting the authentic hadith to make it even much stronger. And so, this is what is happening in the ummah. People are studying in a fragmented way. They don't know why they're saying there. They don't know if they're saying it's da'if as a muhaddis or as a faqih. They don't know if there is the, the chain where it becomes weak and if there were imams who accepted the hadith before the weakness came into it. They don't know if there's other collaborating evidence that shows the narration is not weak and yet they're declaring the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is weak let us continue what is the meaning when you say the hadith is da'if when you say the hadith is da'if you are trying to say the hadith is not authentic Weak is not equal to unauthentic, even in Mustalahul Hadith. Weak means weak. Unauthentic would be something like Munkar, something that's rejected. You treat the word Da'if equal to the word rejected, Munkar. Why do you do that? Why you have this kind of like you treat the word da'if like as if it is the same as, uh, you know, uh, not valid, unauthentic. Why is that? You know why that is? Because you never studied hadith chains. You never picked up the Asma'ul Rijal books. You never looked at the chain of narrations. You have no experience with the different people in the different chains. You don't know, you, you don't know the, like, you don't have experience with the subject. And you're just treating it based upon your assumptions. If a hadith is munkar, it is munkar. And there are other terminologies that have the same meaning. But if it's a hadith is da'if, it does not mean the Prophet did not say it. Now let me ask you another question. What percentage of da'if hadith, a narration of the Prophet that's da'if, has supporting evidence that is either Hassan or Sahih. 
What do you think is the percentage? Do you know? What is the percentage of narrations of the Prophet that are weak, that come as supporting evidence to something that's Hassan or Sahih? Meaning, what percentage of narrations that are known to be weak and they have supporting evidence in the Hadith literature? Or number two, via the great Imams of the time who heard this narration without its weakness and they accepted it in their fiqh, in their mazhab, in their in their in their uh, in their acceptance of practicing that narration. What percentage do you think? Let me tell you. More than easily, 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 easily. I'm being very conservative here because I know somebody will listen and somebody knowledgeable who is listening may go back and check. So I'm being very conservative here. At least 50% of the time, a da'if hadith has supporting evidence in something more authentic than the da'if hadith. At least 50% of the time. So when you say da'if hadith, you take it as it to mean munkar, disregarded, or unauthentic, which is incorrect. Da'if means weak. The narration has weakness, but it is not or no, it is not considered unauthentic. And number two, if there is a da'if hadith. And if more than 50% of the time there is supporting evidence in Sahih or Hasan Hadith or by one of the great Imams of the earlier generations before the weakness came into the Hadith. Then let me ask you, <coughs> why do you say the word Da'if as if it means unauthentic? When you don't know these things, usually people don't know if they're saying this as faqih or muhaddis. They don't know who the chain, who is in that chain that is weak, because somebody, one or more people in that chain are weak. You don't know if you're talking about the matan being weak. You don't know if you're talking about the chain or the person in the chain being weak. Number one. Number two, you. Don't know if you're talking about this as a muhaddis or as a faqih. You don't know if some imam up to the point where the hadith was authentic, some great imam like uh, Qadi Abu Yusuf, for example, or Muhammad Shaybani, for example, or, or others, that they accepted that hadith to be authentic up, to the, up till their time. They accepted it. So if somebody says some narration by Ibn Mas'ud, oh, Ibn Mas'ud is weak. But when he was in Kufa, it wasn't weak. For the earlier generations, it wasn't weak. Later on, something happened in the chain that made it weak. Then you take the word da'if to mean un unauthentic. And then on top of that, you never took the time to figure out if there are other supporting evidence for that da'if hadith or not. There's another word used in hadith literature shaz shaz means it's it's daif is it's weak shaz is no one's heard of it it's like the only one standing alone if you say a hadith is daif it does not mean it's shaz it does not mean that it is uh you can say uh just it's unique type of narration in fact let me see if i can show that to you so now i'm going to give you an example of an authentic narration from Sayyid Bukhari. Okay. Anna faratan saqat fi samanin faqala khudha wa ma hawlaha fatruhuhu. A mouse fell in ghee, in oil. Okay. So the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay, khudha, take the mouse and whatever is around the oil, the, but this is solid ghee. Okay. Solid oil. Solid oil. And throw it away. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, take out the mouse and throw it, uh, throw, uh, throw, and throw away the ghee around it, and then the rest you can use to eat it. 
But there is a Shaz hadith, okay, in which the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, let me now just read this English here. Uh, no, okay. Uh, okay, this one. إذا وقعت الفارة في سمن So if a mouse falls into a plate of oil وكان جامدا If it's solid okay, فألقوها وما حولها Throw away the mouse and what's around it وإن كان معيا And if it's in a liquid state فلا تقربوه Don't go near it So these words are relatively rare compared to all the other narrations because this is a whole page of the same situation of the mouse okay so that is a rare narration but it's not considered unauthentic in this case because the narrator even though he uses words that are not in any of the narrations but he uses some special words even though he's an he's a strong narrator anyway so, what is my point with this small lesson today? That please think twice before we create a culture of da'if hadith, da'if hadith. Okay? As if we own hadith and as if we are in a position to understand hadith. We don't understand hadith literature. It is a very complex subject that needs many, many years of study. Let's humble ourselves, and when we read a narration that says it's da'if, let's humble ourselves to say, okay, I don't know what this really means, and so uh, I should maybe ask a scholar. I should maybe read in some of our classical books. What do our classical books say about this narration? You know, don't be lazy looking for uh, titles saying, oh, uh, it, this hadith is da'if. No, that's not going to do justice to the subject. It's going to do a lot of injustice to the subject. And it's going to do a lot of injustice to Islamic history and our great imams, who many times before these hadiths became weak, they accepted it when they heard it, when the, up to the, when they heard it to the point where the chain of narration was actually super, super authentic. And this is how Islam has a system of a self-collaborating system, you know, that we know a certain hadith is authentic because the great imams of the time, they were able to authenticate it and they accepted it in their school of thought, for example. So, um, it's very important that you do not use this word uh, or, or talking to people, looking down upon. And it, the, that's the other thing is that we use hadith to judge other people. We use hadith to judge other people. Oh, that hadith is da'if. Like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I know what I'm talking about. It's da'if hadith. Whereas the reality is, you don't know what you're talking about. And probably the other brother sometimes may not know what he's talking about either, which is also a problem. But you don't know what you mean by the word da'if and who in the hadith is da'if or if there's any collaborating evidence or if there was any great imam who accepted that da'if hadith up till up to the point that asnad had reached his time so what is my lesson here don't die and and the other thing don't use da'if to mean unauthentic unauthentic da'if is not munkar so anyway i think i've said enough Thank you very much. I heard, hope you benefited from this and that if you were one of those people that would say, oh, that hadith is weak, you will now think twice before saying something like that. Okay, Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.